One of the most ambitious feats ever undertaken in space looks set to go ahead. The team behind the Rosetta spacecraft say they are on track to try and land a tiny probe onto the surface of a comet, currently travelling at more than 30,000 miles an hour. The astrophysicist Sarah Crudders joins me in the studio. Let's have a look in more detail at right. the mission, uh, Sarah. Uh, this is a spacecraft called Rosetta. It set off in 2004 from South America. Since then, it's travelled four billion miles. Sarah, talk us through uh, that route and the journey that it's taken. Well, it's been quite a man's journey because rockets aren't powerful enough to get us to a comet because it's so far away. So it's around 300 million miles from Earth at the moment. So in order to get there, it had to be slung shot around the Earth, then around Mars, then back around the Earth again. Then it was sent to sleep for two years. In January, after nearly 10 years travelling in space, it was woken up successfully, which is obviously a very nervous thing to happen for the scientists involved. Then it took another six months to actually get to the comet. Arriving at the comet was like landing a fly on the speeding bullet. And tomorrow, hopefully, it's going to land on the comet. So talk to us about, about this comet. OK, well, it's Churimov's Gerasmenko, which is named after the two people who Glad discovered you said it. That. <laughs> I wish they had easier names to say, and the number's just a catalogue number. It's around two and a half miles in diameter, and it's made up of rock and ice, and comets were around at the beginning of the solar system. And the picture we've got here is um, quite a surprising picture for scientists, actually, because we expected it to look more like a ball, like a football, and actually the shape is kind of odd. It looks like a rubber duck, so already that was the first surprise to come out of the mission. Uh, and what has Rosetta been doing since it arrived in the vicinity of the comet? Well, Rosetta had, I guess, the closest up view we've ever had of a comet in human history. So it was photographing it, it was analysing the surface, it was looking at dust samples from the comet's tail, because comets have tails which are caused by the as they get closer to the sun. And it's also been analysing the comet itself to work Work out where was best to land the land of Philae, which will be sending to a comet tomorrow. And it's been taking images and sending those back, hasn't it? Let's have a look at, at some of those uh, images and what we can learn uh, from those. So these uh, circles with the letters that you can see here, these are potential landing sites that have been identified, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. So those were the landing sites identified, and actually what scientists found is none of the landing sites were really good enough. I mean, this thing's two and a half miles in, in diameter, but it's got rocks the size of houses, it's got gas, it's got dust. We don't know what the surface is like, whether it would sink. So scientists found uh, these sites. Some were kind of flat but a bit boring. Some had good science. But they actually picked this site here, Site J, as it was compromised between the two. And as you said, they, they were surprised that it wasn't the shape of a football. These it images show them. Yeah, it does. <laughs> the okay. up. Now, tonight, we have passed the first go, no-go point. It is on the right trajectory, uh, yeah. we're told, for landing. What challenges does landing pose? I mean, you've talked a little bit about uh, the geography of it and the, the, the conditions that it will be landing on. Well, space missions, uh, NASA always says, are divided into three different types. Hard, really hard, and then really, really, really difficult. And Rosetta falls into the last of those categories. So. It is incredibly hard. This is going faster than a speeding bullet, this comet. Rosetta is orbiting around the comet. So the idea is to actually nudge the lander Philae down to the surface. That process will start around 8.35 tomorrow morning UK time. It takes around seven hours to make that journey and it takes half an hour to communicate back with Earth about what it's doing. Now, if the lander's even one centimetre out, it will miss the comet. So if it's released one centimetre in the wrong place, it will miss the comet completely. So. so Incredibly Precision difficult. Is everything. Uh, what about the tools that uh, the lander has to help it in that very complicated uh, landing process? Well, the most important tool, even before it's landed on the surface of the comet, is actually this harpoon it's got. So as soon as it gets down to the comet, there's very, very weak gravity on the comet. It's almost non-existent, about one ten thousandth the gravity of we have on Earth. So it needs to anchor itself with a harpoon. After that, it's then going to use these two drills, or three drills, which will two drills, um, which will anchor it into the surface of the comet, and that will also be used to analyse what's beneath the surface of the comet. Yeah, and they'll also be doing that using uh, radar as well, this ground penetrating radar. Yeah, the idea is to build a complete picture of what it is like down on the comet. I mean, we've never landed on a comet before. This has been described as Europe's Apollo moment. It really is a huge achievement of science. The ground penetrating radar will be just one of the experiments they're carrying out. And, and of course, they want to get those images back. Uh, so they've got a high-resolution camera. And I think probably the most inspirational thing to come out of science, you think um, with the moon landings, you saw the Earth, the Earthrise picture from the moon. Pictures always inspire people. So people might not understand the science, but I think the pictures which come out of this mission will just be incredible. Uh, and what is it that they're actually hoping to learn? Well, comets were around when the solar system was forming, and scientists believe that comets are actually really key to understanding 
why we have life here on Earth. They don't believe we'll find life on Earth, but we might find indications of um, why we had life. And scientists also believe that the reason we have water might be down to comets as well. So it's really hoping to start to answer some really fundamental questions about our existence. Sarah Crudders, thanks very much indeed.